Now, this might be a very audacious statement to make, but Canadian employers may very well be sitting on billions of dollars of employee money. Hello once again, my name is Christopher Newfeld of Newfeld Legal. And in this particular YouTube video, we're going to be discussing the potential aspect of Canadian employers, in particular large Canadian employers with employees across the country, potentially sitting on hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of employee money. And we're not just talking about employees that are currently working for them, but we're talking about former employees, individuals who have been long gone even from those companies and those companies that employed them are potentially sitting on hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars of mo those employees money I'm not talking about one company I'm talking the aggregate in the totality that they are sitting on money that is legally the money of those employees including those former employees of the company now why is this such a challenge well the challenge in this is the fact that how business operates does not necessarily coincide with how the law operates and whether that is relating to business, finance, accounting, payroll. These operations can develop, especially with the apparent assistance of technology growth in these companies, um, acquisitions, uh, conformity, coalescing operations, bringing together operations and directing them to one unified headquarters to optimize operations and functionality such that you have it as opposed to individual payroll accounting operations reporting systems at each location everything flows into a large unified headquarters and in particular when those headquarters are based in Toronto or the metropolitan area of Toronto and their business itself might well be spread across the entirety of the country with significant operations significant employee teams located in and about the entire country but they have their headquarters they have their central hub their back office situated in Ontario situated in Toronto and that is the location from whence they do a lot of their work on the corporate side, the back end of the business, as opposed to the front end, where the employ many of the employees, the frontline employers are working, oftentimes out in the field, out in operations, and putting in significant hours. And more often than not, those are the individuals who are out in the field, out in operations, outside Ontario, who are operating largely on an hourly basis, getting paid on an hourly basis as compared to the higher priced corporate types that are salaried and situated in Toronto. So what do we find with this? We find that there is a potential for significant diversities of operations and systems and this creates of itself issues and problems that can build over time and it might seem relatively small and significant especially when there's the efficiencies that are being sought and the challenges with shifting from one format or system to another system over a period of time and oftentimes what then happens is when they shift from one system to another system and this might occur every few years five years ten years 
but they go from one system to another system and they they fail to appreciate that simply moving to another system requires them to go to the back end and go to the most core fundamentals, especially from a legal perspective as to how those aspects are to be dealt with. And they have to be dealt with in a very particularized manner in each jurisdiction in which the employer is operating and employing individuals. And this is where the major issues come about, especially for those employees who are operating who are getting paid outside of the province of Ontario. Because oftentimes what you'll find is there are certain particularities in the province of Ontario which are not replicated outside of Ontario and causes great discrepancies. And this is not only related to where the headquarters of the business operations are. Another critical aspect is where the systems are maintained. And I'm talking about accounting, payroll systems that operate because there's this apparent symbiotic relationship, but more so a reliance upon these operations. And most of these operations sit in the tech capitals of the country. And those tech capitals might well be places like Toronto, Montreal, or south of the border, in New York City, in San Francisco. And they have very particularized features, very particularized objectives that are developed and designed to reflect the particular jurisdiction's home operating system with an absence in many cases of the various nuances that need to be dealt with. And those nuances are critical. For it is a failure upon the employers, the tech providers, the professionals with whom they're working with to address these issues that results in the potential accumulation of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of money that is rightfully entitled to the employee yet is never paid by these great Canadian employers whether it's known or it's not known and why is that the case why is it so important that we look at it this way well the importance of this situation is that the money, even though you might not know of it, and especially when you are no longer working for there, is still legally, in most instances, money that is yours as an employee. It, when it was earned, it became your money. And even though you have since been terminated, you might very well sign paperwork from a true illegal aspect, although this might not well have been tested yet appropriately, but the law is very specific in these instances. And maybe unbeknownst to the legislators who drafted up these laws, they did impose protections and rights to the employees, including former employees, with respect to money that they earned. Because from that instant forward, the legislation oftentimes and arguably presents a picture of that money only being held in a temporal sense by the employer. But always being that of the employee because the employee has earned that money and even though the employer might not be holding it specifically and knowingly in the employee's account the law can be viewed 
as having been done so. And it's the law that is critical. And that is where we lie. But now we'll take a step back and what happens when the employer, with all its professionals, internal and external, were to identify such an issue with respect to its business, what kind of action would it do? Especially where no employee has really addressed it and no employee has apparently attained legal counsel to pursue such matters. Well, you must look at it from the perspective of the employer. These kinds of oversights potentially represent millions, even tens of millions of dollars to a single or large Canadian employer because this is not money that is limited to their current employees. But in a larger sense, also applies to their former employees. Because as we've said, the law and the legislation would appear to suggest that the money is earned and is properly the money of those employees. And for whatever reason, the employer might be holding it, but they are holding it on the recognition that it is the employee's money, including the former employee's money. So if we go back and we say, let's say a larger employer finds itself with potentially 10 or $20 million dollars in this type of employee money that has not been remitted not only to its current employees but more particular to many of its former employees what is it going to do nobody's raised it maybe it's been identified but here is some of the issues there is still a legal challenge that needs to be brought nobody else is doing it and when this oversight, this mistake, this error arose, it most likely did not arise during the current executive team's operations. In all likelihood, it arose decades ago and was never corrected. Or it might have been correct in the initial instance. And over time, as accounting systems and payroll systems computer systems and tech systems change from one iteration to another <coughs> computers got better and better systems changed and they got sold new software and new people came in and there was a focus on centralization and efficiencies and functionality core aspects potentially even trivial aspects were not addressed properly. And in not addressing them, this problem grew and grew. And year over year, for decades possibly, this money has accumulated within the company. And now the current executive being told potentially of this problem has quite the dilemma given that their salaries oftentimes, their compensation, their bonuses are tied to the profitability, these kind of charges can be problematic. They hurt the business outlooks. There might not be this kind of money readily available to address. And why should they be the ones who correct the situation at this point in time, as opposed to somebody else down the road when there is actually the matter brought to the head, addressing it. Because they can deal with it. It is not this current executive team's fault. 
is existing there. It might or might not be correct, but if there is no need to address it, why should it be addressed by this particular team? So what happens? The situation continues. It is not addressed. Modifications are not made because to make modifications in the system would be to set off a warning bell. And if there is ever a time to address it, the hope is that when there is finally an addressing of the situation, the executive team that is currently here is no longer there. They've been paid out. They've taken their money and they've retired. And they can simply feign ignorance and say, this is the system that was provided to us. We were so high up in the spectrum of corporate authority, we were not undertaking these minuscule legal aspects, technical aspects that somebody else in our employee should have done. And furthermore, this seems to be the practice consistent in Canada where these mistakes are being made with greater frequency. So do not look to us. We're long gone. That was not in our job description. That was not a responsibility. And we did not make the mistake. You probably have to go back 15, 20 years, maybe more, to find out where the mistake arose and that mistake could be faulted to a lot of individuals and many times persons outside the company, persons down the totem pole, and just technical issues that come about with this stuff. And nobody has addressed them. So that is a scenario that we find ourselves left with, where you as an employee or more particularly, those of you who are former employees of large companies might well have significant amounts of money. And we don't know what the significance, it really depends on a lot of factors. But you could be out 10, 20, 50, Maybe even if you had a very long career, a very successful career, in particular as an hourly employee, working long hours, putting in a long time in the business, you could even be saying there might well be $100,000 worth of employee money that is specifically attributable to yourself that is sitting with your former company and that is technically by law your money that is there and you are not doing anything about it because you are just not aware of that but it could very well be that you have money sitting in your former employer's accounts. That is legally yours and the law would recognize it as such. The question is, are you willing to look into it? Do you know with whom to work with to see if that money might be there and if there might be the means for you to gain access to that money? Because if the money, and this is discernible without engaging the employer at the outset, if there is money that is legally your money, why are you leaving it with your former employer when it is money that is yours? So if you want to address this aspect and you've been working, and especially if you've 
previously been working and you're no longer working for a very large Canadian employer and you put in many years, you put in lots of hard work, lots of extra time, lots of expectations and even in particular if you worked outside of Ontario there is in my estimation a strong likelihood that there is a considerable amount of employee money that is rightfully yours that is actually sitting in the accounts of your former employer. So you can go down into the information in this website and go through it. And if you feel that this is something you're interested in addressing with ourselves, looking into further, please feel free to contact myself. Go to the website, call us, email us in strict confidence, and we can discern whether there is an opportunity and whether there is a significant amount of money that is legally yours, that you have legally earned and the law in truth recognizes as your money that is simply sitting with your former employer. Thank you.